pass by Selwyn Township office and wondered who works there and what do they do? This week I'm exploring those key actors with focus on counselors and the higher level public administration staff. As a voter, this information is important for understanding what to expect from your counselor and if they're the right person for the job. To do this, I'm first going to unpack some important terminology to remind you of information we discussed in the last video and to situate who the key players are in Selwyn. Then I'm going to explain the politics administration dichotomy, a funny concept but an important element when considering who you're voting for in this coming election. Before we begin, I want to be explicit that what I'm discussing today is of my own making. I have no partnership with Selwyn Township in creating this video, and my comments are insights of my own, drawn from publicly accessible documents such as government resources, academic literature, my own research, and personal experience. The first concept we should explore is government, which may seem obvious, but actually holds a different meaning and plays out differently across communities in Canada. In essence, government points to a group of people who exercise power that is bestowed upon them. As noted last week, Canada's constitution gives provinces the power to create municipalities. In turn, Ontario has the Municipal Act, legislation that sets out the structure and expectations of local government in our province. Under this act, municipalities are expected to be made of, of two key groups of people, politicians on one side and public servants on the other. Let's look first at politicians, or as we more commonly call them, municipal councillors. Ontario municipalities must have at least five councillors who make up a municipal council. In Selwyn Township, we have five council members. One representative from each of the wards, so one for Ennismore, one for Lakefield, and one for Smith, as well as one reeve and one deputy reeve. In Selwyn, each councillor has three main roles that are mandated by the Municipal Act and other provincial legislation. First, they must represent the people of the township in their decision making by identifying and delivering problems and deciding how to move forward on those issues. Second, municipal councillors have to make policy. To do this, they establish principles, objectives, and goals that ultimately determine the future activities of our municipality. For example, if a township wanted to increase tourism, they would generate a strategic plan of what was to be accomplished, how they wanted to do it, and a time period. Third, councillors are stewards. They are responsible for ensuring the municipality's financial and administrative resources are used efficiently. An important example is creating a budget each year. Next, we have public servants, also called public administration or staff. These are the officers and employees of the municipality who put the councillor's decisions into practice and exercise administrative roles and procedures to do so. Staff are hired under specific departments and carry out duties to support their superiors. For example, this includes conducting research to provide advice to their managers or the council on important ideas, or they carry out duties in the community such as snow plowing. Here it's important to note that the types of departments and the number of staff located within each department is different from municipality to municipality in Ontario. This is because departments are put in place to meet the needs and the context of the community. Selwyn is collectively a rural township with a small population. Therefore, it's different from a larger urban centre such as Peterborough or Toronto. In turn, we have a smaller number of departments and staff, but these actors work together across a variety of elements that need attention in our township. In Selwyn, the main departments and actors who work with councillors include the following. The clerk's office, who provides legal advice, maintains records, runs election, and provides general information to the public. The finance department, who manages and distributes finance and tax information and is responsible for reporting on financial benchmarks across our performance measures of the township. The Parks and Recreation Department manages the operation of municipal community centers and arenas, as well as a variety of outdoor and indoor facilities, as well as green space, trails, and parkland. The Public's Works Department is responsible for a wide variety of services, including snowplow and the landfill site operations. Finally, the Building and Planning Department is responsible for providing a wide range of advisory and regulatory services relating to land use enforcement of the Ontario Building Code and some of our township bylaws. Now here's that funny term, the politics administration dichotomy. This is an academic theory pointing to a clear cut separation of the actors, their roles and their responsibilities while working in government. On one side, we see political actors, so council, who are elected but make subjective decisions. This means they weigh a number of variables, both personal and political, when making their decisions. On the other side, we have public servants who are hired and are supposed to act neutral on all issues when creating and implementing policy. This means their activity is not supposed to reflect their personal needs or any bias or desires. 
the Municipal Act and the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act, among other guiding documents in Ontario, agree with this approach and in turn structures the legal functions and processes of municipalities around this theory. Here we see scholars arguing that such an approach points to more democratic activity and less corruption. For example, councillors can direct staff to conduct unbiased research, the staff then come back with information, the councillors make decisions from that information instead of solely relying on their own wisdom. So why is this important when casting your vote? While one might assume these divisions are clear-cut, they are not. There are numerous and ongoing instances where both councillors and public servants have to come together and deliberate important matter, such as council meetings. These we'll get into more closely next week. In these forums, a councillor must be aware of their full responsibilities and restrictions and perform their duties with integrity, accountability, and wherever possible, impartiality. Specifically, there are several legal frameworks in which councillors exercise their duties. For all of Selwyn's five councillors, they must be aware of and follow the Criminal Code of Canada, the Municipal Act, Municipal Conflict of Interest Act, Municipal Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act, Occupational Health and Safety Act, Ontario Human Rights Code, the Planning Act, and others. And for the Reeve and the Deputy Reeve when participating on Peterborough County Council, they must be aware of the county's procedural bylaws as well as the county's workplace violence harassment policy. There are also closed council meetings where councillors hold important discussions and are privy to information that cannot be shared beyond that meeting. Such confidentiality and awareness are a must when representing residents of our close-knit communities. Also, if these lines are crossed in a manner where penalties are applied, it can cost municipalities financially and tie them up in legal processes over many years. So, in all accounts, voters need to be sure that who they select on the ballot is there to represent their ward in a responsible and respectful manner and support the township as a whole, not just for themselves or select persons. I'm running for Ennismore Ward Councillor position because I'm passionate about my community and with three of our five councillors leaving, I see the need for someone well-versed in politics and public administration to step up and continue the great work we already see. I have experience working across different levels of government, and educational institutional structures, as well as working in ad hoc bodies and community organizing. And I've got experience in both paid and volunteer positions. In these forums, I'm regularly involved in matters requiring confidentiality and respect, and I'm not afraid to ask questions regarding my role, my position, my responsibilities, and just to ensure that everybody is on the same page. While I am well aware of what I'm getting into, I'm also passionate, open, and honest. I'm confident, and I have what it takes to uphold integrity of Ennismore and our township as a whole. Thanks for watching. I hope this information has been helpful. Did you like the content? Over the course of my campaign, I'll be releasing more short videos diving into the important facets of municipal government and politics in our township. The goal is to educate others, make municipal politics more engaging, and promote my campaign ahead of the 2022 Selwyn Township election. Want to know more about what I have to offer? Add a comment. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share to make others aware.